This is a video lecture on rotating frames relative motion analysis. Relative motion analysis using translating coordinate frames works for finding velocities and accelerations of points on rigid bodies that are rigidly connected or pinned together. If one body is sliding with respect to another, or if the two bodies are entirely separate, such as two airplanes traveling on separate arcs, then we need to use a rotating coordinate frame which rotates with one of the bodies, rather than the original translating coordinate frame. The rotating frames equation is the most general relative motion equation. Fixed axis rotation and the translating frames relative motion are special cases of this larger equation. So we can always use the rotating frames equation, but it's also the most complex equation. So we often try and use these two special cases of fixed axis rotation and translating frames if we can. Previously, when we were considering relative motion, we created a series of coordinate frames that translated but did not rotate with each rigid body. Now we need a frame that rotates with the body. We will designate this X prime and Y prime. What we can see in this system is a collar C that's sliding against the body BD. We've got a rotating frame X prime Y prime that's attached at B and rotating with BD. This means that the collar is always moving in the X prime direction regardless of the angle of the arm with respect to the horizontal. We put the rotating frame attached to the object that observes the sliding object. And we add another velocity, the velocity V of C with respect to B relative describing the motion of the sliding object as viewed from the rotating frame. Often, aligning the rotating frame with the sliding motion can simplify your equations. So our vector, Vc with respect to B relative, is always going to be in the i hat prime direction because of that orientation of the rotating frame along the direction of motion of our collar C. The rotating frame rotates with the same angular velocity and acceleration as the body it is attached to. At an instant, we can describe the motion of the collar C as a combination of the motion of the point on AB that the collar is passing over. So we can think of that as a sticker attached on AB plus the motion of the collar sliding against AB. So the motion of the sticker is described by VA plus VC with respect to A, and the motion of the collar with respect to the sticker is described by this new term, VC with respect to A relative. Just like in translating frames, Relative subscripts indicate a view from the translating frame, whereas the additional term rel, or in some cases rote, or x prime, y prime, z prime, means viewed from the rotating frame. When we come to the acceleration equation, we also need to add Coriolis acceleration, in addition to the movement of the sticker and the acceleration with respect to the sticker. This is because we're changing the direction of the velocity vector vc with respect to a relative. A change in the direction of a velocity vector is a change in velocity, which is an acceleration. And so that's what the Coriolis acceleration represents. So here are our rotating frame equations when we put in our earlier translating frame relative motion as well as the Coriolis acceleration and our new rotating frame relative velocity and acceleration. So once again, these parts represent the movement of the point attached to the rigid body we've got our, our rotating frame attached to, and these parts represent the extra velocities and accelerations associated with the sliding or otherwise not pinned movement. 
Sometimes we use different terminology, capital omegas, in this equation to remind us that these values aren't just any angular velocity, but they are the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the rotating frame as it moves attached to the body. Because our frame now rotates, we have to convert all of our expressions in the equation into one frame. It can be either the xy frame or the fixed frame directions, or it can be the rotating frame direction if it is at an angle to the fixed frame. This often occurs when we select a rotating frame that's oriented to simplify those relative motions in the rotating frame velocity and acceleration. There may be cases where you want to work in one frame for velocity and the other frame for acceleration. And that can work as long as any expressions within the same equation are in the same coordinate system. Just as with other relative motion analysis, we start by creating a diagram of the body with key distances and angles labeled. We add a fixed coordinate system and we add a rotating coordinate system on the body that sees the sliding. We identify the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the rotating frame. We also identify known angular and linear velocities and accelerations, whether we know magnitude, direction, or both, and we define our unknown vectors. We start at a point that we know and step through point by point towards the point that we want to know about. This will be a series of translating frame relative motion equations and or rotating frame relative motion equations, whichever is needed. And we substitute them all back into one vector equation. Then we use the equation that we generated along with our known values for angle, distance, and so on to solve for our, our unknowns. Recall that we can create two scalar equations using the x and y directions from each vector equation so we can solve for two unknowns. Some hints about rotating frames. Think about the placement and orientation of your rotating frame. Sometimes this can help reduce the algebra work in your solution. Write out the whole rotating frames equation and make sure you don't miss any terms. Be clear in each equation you write which frame is being used and take your time with this analysis. It can be challenging. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.